Lake Heights to the east. Um, and so he's making video today. So there's the field that he's making here as well. Um, he's going to be a sub for today. Um, just a couple things to remind you of this week. Number one, you have a quiz on Friday over your definition of the omnipresence of God. So make sure you're looking at that. That's on your Google Classroom. Um, so look there for the definition. I think we introduced it on Friday. So make sure you're studying for that on for um, November 20th. Secondly, you have a test on Wednesday. So um, be sure you're studying for that. I posted the study guide for that on Google Classroom so you can find it there. Um, tomorrow you will have a quizzes day so you'll do some reviewing with quizzes and then on Wednesday you'll be your test and that's on chapter 4 of the Roman Republic also um, timeline books that's what it was <laughs> sorry about that forgot that timeline books are due on Wednesday as well your test day so 1400 BC to 1200 BC is the first page and then 1200 BC to 1000 BC is your second page. So make sure both of those are done. Again, if you need help knowing what goes on those pages, please go to Google Classroom and you can find exactly what you need to put there. So um, again, those are to be turned in on test day. All right, so we are going to um, today finish up chapter four. Um, we're gonna finish up the packet of notes that we started on Friday. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to talk a little bit about it right now in this video and then you are going to go onto Google Classroom and you're going to see the slides there and you can put in all of your fill-ins. So you can do that quietly after this video is done. Um, Mr. Miller will give you time to pull out your computers, log on to Google Classroom, find the PowerPoint that I've loaded up there for you and then you may fill those blanks in to your note packet. That way if you missed any on Friday you can go back through and fill those in as well. All right, so we started talking about some civil wars that were going on within the Roman Republic. We finished up with the Punic Wars. The Punic Wars are between Rome and Carthage. And we all know who won all three of them, right? Rome did. Alrighty, so you should know that. Um, so we talked about the first civil war on Friday, and that was between Marius, who had his own army that was backing him, um, and he had the support of the common people. And it was against Sulla and his army. He had the support of the Senate and the patricians. So the first civil war is between Marius and Sulla. And I believe we got through enough of that to where we saw that Sulla won in the end. And he um, made himself dictator for a few years. And then once things were settled um, where he wanted them to be, he um, gave his, that power, that imperium, that authority of the Roman government back over to the Senate. Um, a few years later, we're going to have, um, some more, some more, um, upheaval within the Senate, um, people struggling for power. And I think we did talk about this on Friday. We end up with three generals. We have Julius Caesar, Crassus, and Pompey, who are all gaining popularity. Um, Crassus was extremely wealthy. Um, Pompey had a huge army backing him, and then of course Julius Caesar had his own army that backed him as well. Julius Caesar had a lot of support for the common people. All three of them wanted to rule Rome. However, none of them could fully get the support of the people, so they decided to rule together. Now, just because they were ruling together doesn't mean that they really got along very well. They just made the best of the situation, and they all kind of got the power they wanted by agreeing to, to rule together. Crassus is going to die um, fighting in battle in Asia Minor, and we're left with Pompey and Caesar. Pompey is going to get really fearful of Caesar's growing popularity. Caesar has been governor in Gaul, um, which is modern day France, right? So he was governor over there, and he kept sending letters back to the people of Rome, letting him know of all the great, amazing things he was doing in Gaul. And the people just loved him. So he had a lot of backing and, and power because of his popularity. Uh, Pompey was very fearful of that. And so he convinces the Senate to, um, to force Caesar or tell Caesar to come back to Rome, to disband his army first and then come back to Rome. Caesar decides not to listen to the Senate and he and his army march back to Rome. They cross the Rubicon River and um, essentially declare war um, against Pompey. All right, so that's the second civil war, Pompey versus Caesar. So Pompey and Caesar 
are going to um, be involved in a war. Caesar pretty much defeats Pompey in pretty much every battle. He's going to defeat him in Italy, in Greece, in Egypt, in Spain, in Asia Minor. So everywhere Caesar is defeating Pompey. And eventually um, Pompey is, is, is done, he's gone, and um, Caesar's going to put Cleopatra on the throne in Egypt. Um, Caesar's going to return to Rome and he's going to basically force the Senate to make him dictator for life. So this is in 46 BC. So in 46 BC, Julius Caesar becomes dictator of Rome for life. Now we're going to see that that life is not very long, okay? But he does get the Senate to declare him dictator for life. Um, Caesar's going to actually do a lot of good things for the people of Rome. Remember, he has the backing of the common people. So he is going to give jobs to those who are unemployed. So he creates jobs for people who need them. He um, allows the people who were living in the provinces, those areas that Rome had conquered, that they had created provinces out of, he gives them citizenship, which is always a good thing. So now that they have citizenship, now they have representative representation in, in the Senate. So that gives them a little bit more say in the government. He also increases the size of the Senate to actually 900. So it went from 300 to 900. He's gonna increase the size of the Senate, but he's also going to decrease its power. So he makes it bigger, but it doesn't have as much power as it used to have. And then finally, he's going to adopt a new calendar, actually very similar to the calendar we use today, which is based on the Egyptian calendar of 365 and a quarter days, which is why we have leap year every four years, right? Okay, so we, he adopts a new calendar, the Julian calendar, and it's based on the Egyptian calendar. So he's going to continue to grow in popularity because of all these reforms that he's making for the common people. And remember, the common people make up the majority of people in Rome. So he's getting a lot of popularity. And what have we seen? We've seen people, we've seen someone who's gained a lot of popularity with the common people, normally doesn't have a whole lot of favor in the Senate. And so we're going to see some senators, even friends of Caesar, who are going to actually turn against Caesar and they're going to form a mob and they're actually going to stab him. And it's led by two people, by Cassius and Brutus, and they are going to form a mob of angry senators, and they are going to stab Caesar to death on March 15th, 44 BC. So he gets to be dictator for life for two years. All right, so Caesar is killed on March 15th, 44 BC, and we call that the Ides of March. All right, soon after that, we're going to have the third civil war. All right, so there's going to be, again, some competition over who is going to be in charge of Rome now that Caesar is gone. Um, so Caesar has named his grand nephew Octavian his heir. However, we also have um, Mark Antony and Marcus Lepidus who are also trying to vie for power. So the three of them actually end up creating the second triumvirate. All right, so we had the first triumvirate, which was Pompey, Crassus, and Caesar. The second triumvirate is Octavian, Mark Antony, and Marcus Lepidus. So you need to know those two. You need to know that the first triumvirate was Pompey, Crassus, and Caesar, and the second triumvirate is Octavian, Mark Antony, and Marcus Lepidus. All right, so they're basically going to divide up the Roman Empire and rule their specific areas. Um, Caesar is going to, or sorry, not Caesar, Caesar is dead, Julius Caesar is dead. Anyway, Octavian is going to really try to increase his power over the other two. He eventually forces Marcus Lepidus to retire and um, give up his portion that he's ruling. So then it's just left with Octavia and Mark, Octavian and Mark Antony ruling. So um, Mark Antony actually marries Octavian's sister, Octavia. Can't say their mother was very creative with their names, was she? Okay, we have Octavian and Octavia. So Mark Antony marries Octavia, who is Octavian's sister. Um, however, Mark Antony decides he wants to divorce Octavia to marry Cleopatra. All right, so um, that, as you can imagine, does not make Octavian very happy that Mark Antony would divorce his sister to marry Cleopatra. And so what Octavian does is he goes to the Senate and convinces the Senate that Cleopatra and Mark Antony are planning to overthrow Rome. Basically, Mark Antony leaves Rome um, to Cleopatra and her children. 
in his will. So the Senate gives Octavian the permission to declare war on Mark Antony and Cleopatra. So they're going to go to war in the Third Civil War. And eventually, um, Octavian is going to defeat Mark Antony and Cleopatra in the Battle of Actium in 31 BC. In 30 BC, Mark Antony and Cleopatra commit suicide. And so that's the end. And with that, that victory there at the Battle of Actium in 31 actually ends the Roman Republic. And we're gonna start the Roman Empire in our next chapter. So um, Octavian is set as the sole leader of Rome. And that pretty much starts the Roman Empire. And that's kind of sets the stage for Jesus to be born because Octavian actually becomes, renames himself as Caesar Augustus. He takes on that title of Caesar from Julius Caesar. And he is the one that ushers in um, a time of peace called the Pax Romana. And then it's under that, that Jesus is born. So we can talk about that next chapter. So that's kind of exciting. All right. I hope that gives you a little quick overview of um, the three civil wars. So first civil war, Marcus, sorry, Marius and Sulla. First civil war is Marius versus Sulla. Sulla wins. Second civil war, Julius Caesar and Pompey. Julius Caesar wins. Third civil war, Mark Antony and Octavian. Octavian wins. All right, and that third at the end of the third civil war is where we have the end of the Roman Republic and the beginning of the Roman Empire. All right, pull out your fill-in notes and um, open up your PowerPoint off of Google Classroom and go ahead and fill in your notes and do that for the rest of the bell. Once you finish that, you may work on your timeline books. So um, I have told, hopefully Mr. Miller has told you at the beginning of class to make sure you have those in class today. So you can work on those if you have time to do that after you fill in your notes. All right, thank you guys. I'll see you later.